Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today we're gonna to be painting Abstract Venice Canal, and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Merlot. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for the materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'm gonna be using. I'll be using acrylic paint today. I have chrome orange, titanium white, deep yellow, Mars black, phthalo green, and ultramarine blue. And again, you could certainly switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my tools today, I have a standard number two pencil. I have a number five round brush, and I have a palette or a painting knife that has two angles of different lengths on it. Um, so those are the tools that I'm going to be using, and of course you can switch them up a little bit if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you're probably going to need a cup of water for washing your tools, as well as a paper towel for drying them. And down below this video, I'm going to provide you with a couple of additional resources that can help you through your painting process. Um, the first of them is a link where you could purchase the same paint kit that I'm using, from the large canvas to the colors to the palette knife and all that good stuff. Um, so that's there for you, but there's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that out and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are creating a sketch or an outline. So I'm gonna be using my uh, pencil and we're gonna be in essence kind of um, outlining where our edges of our buildings are for the canal entrance um, and the water. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna give you a couple of dots to make and then we're gonna connect the dots and um, have ourselves some kind of separation between our sections. So what I'm gonna do is um, on the left-hand side, I'm just gonna come up about a half of an inch and make myself a little bit of a mark right about here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over about, I would say about a, a little bit more than a quarter of the way. Um, so if, you, if this is about your halfway mark and this is about your quarter way mark, I go a little bit over to the right and I'm up maybe about three inches. I'm gonna make myself another little mark. And I'm gonna connect these two with a little bit of an arcing line. So I'm gonna just kind of go like this. This is gonna be the edge of, or the bottom of one of my um, buildings. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to make another mark at about the same width this way up at the top. So you could use like your brush or something that you have that's of a good length to actually measure how far away from the edge you've made this mark. And then you go all the way up to the top and you make yourself another mark and then you're just gonna kind of sketch down until you meet it. They don't even have, it doesn't even have to be perfectly straight, but at least that gives you a nice guide as to um, about the distance away. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. This time I'm gonna come up maybe about, I don't know, a little bit, a little bit higher than this, so maybe about an inch and a half to two inches, make myself a mark. And I'm gonna come in maybe about four inches and up about four inches. So I've got this a little bit higher than this one. So somewhere about there, and I'm going to, where I arced this one down towards the bottom of my canvas, this one I'm gonna be arcing up. So it looks like we're actually traveling around a corner. So I'm gonna make my mark, my arc go in, in an upward direction. It doesn't have to be severe, just something slight like that. And then again, use whatever tool you want as a measuring tool. So my pencil is long enough, so it's almost exactly as long as my pencil. So I'll go up to the top, get myself the, the right length, make myself a mark, and then just connect this to this down here. And again, it doesn't have to be a perfectly straight line, just something that's gonna separate the two. 
And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up from this corner, maybe about an inch, make myself another mark, and then I'm gonna come up from here. I would say to almost, if you were to um, find the halfway point going up and down, it's gonna be a little bit lower than that. So I'm gonna come up maybe about a third or a quarter of the way up this wall, make myself a mark, and then I'm gonna connect this mark to this mark with another arc. So something like this. So it's in essence, this the canal is going around that way. This is the edge of our building. Maybe there's a little inlet of water over in through there. And that's all we're gonna do for our outline. So we're gonna be using our painting knife for the next step so you can get that out and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting these two outside um, buildings. I'm gonna be using my palette knife. The colors that I'm using are black, blue, orange, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have fun <laughs> and just slap some paint on. Um, but I do have a little bit of a strategy here. I do wanna have these um, edges a little bit dark and also the bottom where it meets the water. I want that kind of dark. Um, so as I'm going through this process and I'm building these colors, that's in my head that I do want those to be a little bit darker. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna put some blue on my fancy um, painting tool and I'm just gonna make some, some chaotic marks and I'm gonna do that on both sides. So I'm gonna put some going down this edge and they don't have to be anything systematic. You can go left to right, you can go diagonal, you can go up and down, whatever floats your boat is, ooh, we're painting a boat. <laughs> so um, now that I've done blue, I'm not gonna wash my palette knife. I'm just gonna pick up some orange and I'm gonna add some streaks and blobs of orange um, and I'm gonna do that on both buildings and you can have as much as you want or as little as you want totally up to you these um, buildings in venice come in all different colors and all you know so you can really just use your imagination it depends on what uh, canal you're going down will determine what color the buildings are and then i'm gonna do some black now that i've got some orange on there and if you feel like you've got too much paint on your um, palette knife. You can always just wipe it off on your palette or on your paper towel, whatever is fine by me. So I'm just picking up a little bit of black. I do want some black along those edges. So I am just kind of strategically placing my black because that's going to be um, my dark accent, but definitely down the, the exterior side and the bottom. And you can see I'm leaving some some white spaces open and that's gonna be, we're gonna be using the white paint to kind of, I don't wanna say blend these, but definitely get these colors to kind of work together. And sometimes you can use this black or the darker, the darkest of dark to kind of um, give the impression that there's windows or an opening or something along that line. Um, but now that I've got my colors on, now what I'm gonna start doing is picking up white and just kind of putting some white in between these spaces. And again, I'm really not um, painting it in right now. I'm just kind of applying the paint in these really thick, almost like globs, <laughs> um, just to get it on here. And once it's on here, then I'm gonna start um, to get it to intermingle, but really not to um, blend it too much. So now that it's on there, I've got all my colors that I want. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use um, a downward kind of soft, I'm pulling the paint like this, and I'm really not pressing hard. I am, I'm holding my palette knife nice and loosely, and I just wanna get these colors to look like they've, they're intermingling a little bit, but I'm not really um, over blending them. I do wanna make sure that I've got all the color down to the bottom that I want. And then once I've got them on here and I've got them blended a little bit, I can do any adjustments that I want. So I might find that I want more blue or more orange or more black in some of the areas. But 
what I first want to do is just kind of get these colors on here and get them to kind of start working together. And I do think that I'm going to want to have a little bit more blue or darkness over on this um, left side here. So left side of my right building. So I just put some more blue on my painting tool. Going to get it on there and then just kind of pull it down. And if your edge of your building isn't perfect, it's okay. That's, you know, that's the joy of this type of painting, this style of painting. If you want there to look like there's kind of windows or something or edges of building, you can always put a little vertical line here and there and just have fun with it. Yeah, I think I want some more orange on this building too. I really want that orange to pop. So just putting a little bit more orange on my, on my building. And then same thing with over here. I think I want more, more of the orange to represent. So I just put a little bit more on my painting tool and get these to be whatever color you want. Maybe you want yours to be, you know, lighter than mine. Maybe you want yours to be darker than mine or more orange or more blue. Whatever is visually appealing to you is totally fine. And then we're going to be using this same tool for the next step. So once you've got your exterior buildings painted, you can wash this palette knife and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna be doing for the next step is we are painting the inside buildings. So these are gonna be the ones that are going into the canal. I'm gonna be using my palette knife and I want these to look like maybe they're being hit by the sunshine. Like as soon as you turn that corner, the sun is over in that direction is just illuminating these buildings in through here. So the colors that I'm gonna be using are orange, yellow, blue, white, and a little bit of my green. So how I'm gonna start this is I'm gonna be um, putting some yellow paint on my palette knife and I'm gonna just kind of be putting it in various areas and I'm not putting it very heavy. I want it to be on the thinner side. These areas I used with thick paint. Now I'm, I'm gonna be using these with a little bit thinner paint because I want it to be nice, light and fluffy. Fluffy, that's not a word to describe a building, but you knew what I meant. <laughs> So I did some yellow. I'm going to pick up a little bit of orange now and I'm going to do the same thing. I want it to be on the thinner side almost so you can kind of see through it and it's not really, really dark. But we are going to be putting white on it in a minute, which will help to um, make it a little bit lighter and more sunshiny. Um, but in the, in the meantime, I'm just kind of allowing it to be a little bit on the thinner side. Um, I think I'm going to pick up a little bit more yellow just so I can get partly down by the edges of these building, the um, exterior buildings. Make sure that I don't have this all too, too white when I go to um, do it in a minute. So I just want to make sure that I've got a little bit of yellow over here on the edges as well. Now I'm going to pick up a touch of blue. I don't want a lot of blue, but I do want these buildings to color coordinate. So I'm going to take a little bit of blue and just dab it in here and there, not much at all. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wipe my knife off on my paper towel and now I'm gonna be picking up white paint and now I'm gonna be similar process that I did on the exterior buildings is I'm taking that white and and using it a little bit heavier than I did the other colors and I'm just kind of filling in those spots before I start to blend it and then once I've got most of these spots with some type of paint on them nice white paint um, intermingled here now is the time that I'm going to start to kind of just pull that white paint down get this to blend in nicely and you can see it's pulling those other colors with it because wet paint will pull other wet paint um, and you can see it's just making these beautiful streaks and some of them because we kind of used the original the darker colors in like a splotchy type of um, way it's leaving marks as if there's maybe some windows or some building separations so you can really use your imagination as to what you're actually seeing once you've got this on here and then before you're done what we're going to do is we're going to pick up a touch of your green and we're going to put it at the bottom of this building so 
wh what's going to happen is it's going to look like there's maybe a little bit of moss or something at the bottom. We didn't do it to these ones yet. We'll do that later um, when we're working on the water itself. But I'm just picking up a real tiny bit. And if you want, you can even wipe it off on your um, paper towel. And then you just you can put a little bit at the bottom and then just kind of pull it up just to get little streaks here and there just to uh, make it look like it's been you know affected by that canal water for hundreds of years and then we are going to use this same tool for the next step so once you've got this back building or the interior building all nice and painted you can wash and dry your palette knife and get ready for the next step all right so what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting our water so we're going to use our palette knife and we're going to be using all the colors on the palette so, and my dominant color is obviously green but i'm also going to be using a lot of yellow and white up top so to speak to the sunshine that's gonna that's being on the other side of this wall so i'll use a lot of yellow and white up at the top i'm also going to be using blue in my water and then when i get near my buildings i'm going to be using some black and some orange because it's going to be reflecting what's in the buildings so i'm going to start with some yellow on my palette and i'm really going to just kind of get a little bit of yellow going on up and through here and i'm not concerned about making it do anything special right now. All I'm really doing like I did on the other sections is just laying down the colors first and then we'll get them to um, intermingle with each other in a minute. So just getting a little bit of yellow up in the top. Now I'm gonna pick up some white. I didn't wash my palette knife. I'm just gonna put some additional white up here. And sometimes going around these corners can be a little bit tricky, but I know that my water is going to be going left to right with its ripples, so that's the direction that I'm keeping my palette knife going is left to right. Um, and if you run into wet green or wet black, just work it on in. It's all, it's all part of the same thing. So the beauty of abstracts, we just get to work everything in together and make it look so beautiful. And as I'm doing this water, the, the reason why we're using such an interesting color for the water is these canals have a very interesting tone of green to them. Um, and depending on what canal you're down will depend on what color greenish, yellowish, murkyish, <laughs> greenish, bluish color it is. So just know that whatever kind of color happens, even if it doesn't look the most natural, it's all right because this water does not look very natural when you see it in person. So I just picked up some green paint along with whatever was left on my brush from um, the upper area with the yellow and the, and the white. And I do want some green up here, so I'm just kind of dabbing it in. And again, we'll, we'll um, blend it more in a minute. Right now, I just wanna kinda get it on there make sure I've got it all in through these little corners. And then now I'm just gonna kind of really start almost globbing it on in this main area in through here. I'm going green. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of blue in a second here. But again, my dominant color is the green. So that's what's really happening the most in this entire area. And now that I've got a lot of this green on there, I'm gonna pick up some of my blue and again i haven't done anything with my palette knife yet it's kind of um taking on its own beautiful layers as i'm doing this before i do my dark stuff over on the edges i'm going to get this blended in a little bit so I, right now now that i've got that blue on there i'm going to wipe my palette knife off and now is the time where i'm going to just kind of lightly almost pull these together like this without um, I'm not pushing my my tool very hard. I'm just kind of lightly letting the paint do whatever it wants to. I might have to move my hand a little bit in a second so I can make sure that I get it. Um, but you can see these colors are just streaking together so beautifully. They look, you know, I know that they look abstract, but they do take on kind of a, a realistic look when you're able to get them to blend in a in a natural way here. I have to 
change my position of my hand here to just make sure I've got everything kind of blended over here. And again, I'm really just kind of pulling this paint nice and gently. And if you don't have enough paint on the canvas, you can certainly add more. Um, just get it to be, have enough on there so you can move it in um, a way that feels not feels good to you. If you again, if you don't have enough paint, you might find yourself scraping the um, canvas. And if you start to scrape it, that probably tells tells you that you don't have enough paint. Um, you want to just be able to almost like loosely glide your your palette knife on top of it. That's going to give you those really beautiful streaks. Now that I've got my um, got it nice and blended as much as I want. I don't want to over blend it. I'm going to start adding the darker colors over here on the edges. So again, I'm just going to wipe my palette knife off. I'm picking up a little bit of orange first. I'm just going to kind of put a little bit of orange along this edge and then just almost kind of tap it or pull it into um, the, the, the greenish bluish color. And I'm going to do the same thing over on that side. So a little bit of orange on my brush, kind of tap it along the edge of the building, and then you can just kind of move your brush, your brush. Here we go again. I'm going to start calling my, my palette knife a brush. I thought I, I thought I had it figured out and was going to call it a palette knife the whole time, but I guess I'm wrong. If I call it a, a brush, I'm sorry. And then we are, I'm going to put a tiny bit of black. Once I've got that orange on there, gonna, I wiped my knife off on my paper towel. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of black, put this closer to the building like this, and then just make sure I have a little bit of that black pulled out. So again, it's just giving us almost a nice reflection slash shadow at the bottom of the um, building. And then we are gonna be using this same tool for the next step. So once you've got this little bit of a reflection down at the bottom of these buildings, you can wash and dry your palette knife and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're going to um, add like a little separation between our building and our water. Similarly to what we did here, um, this was kind of a, a reflection type shadow and I'd like to do the same thing up here, but I didn't want it to be so dark and I didn't want it to get confused with the light bright stuff that we had in the water. So that's why I'm doing a little separate step for it. So I'm gonna use my palette knife and I'm gonna use black and maybe a little bit of orange. Um, and if I feel like I have to go into the green, I'll do that too. So I'm gonna put just a, just a tiny bit of black on the edge of my knife in through here. And I'm really just gonna just gently kind of skirt it along the edge there. And you can see you don't need much for it to make a difference. And then I'm gonna pick up just a tiny bit of orange, just so it's nice and, uh, you know, it has a little bit of darkness down at the bottom of these buildings. And so you can really tell that there's, you know, maybe some, some dirt, some murkiness, something at the bottom of those buildings. And it doesn't have to be consistent, you know? You can pull some of it, you know, higher than the others. You can have some of it more orange. Maybe, you know, if you want there to be a little bit more of that, um, almost mossy look you can add a touch of green um, but i'm kind of digging just that it, I, I hardly did anything to it but i've got enough of a of an of an effect to let me know that this is in fact the bottom of the building and it seems to be working really well with my water i suppose you could put a little bit of the orange in the water too in these little ripples to make it look like there's a little bit of a reflection so feel free to you know kind of bend it twist it and tweak it as much as you want and then we're going to use the same um, painting tool for the next step so once you've got this your building separation as separated as you want you can wash and dry this tool and get ready for the next step 
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the first layer of our bridge. We're gonna be using our palette knife and we're gonna be using just black paint. So I'm gonna give you a couple of markers. We'll make a couple of markers and hopefully by the time we got this done, it'll look something like one of these fun bridges. So these bridges come in all different shapes, styles, heights, widths. So if yours doesn't come out like mine, it's all right because it's just an abstraction of one of the thousands or hundreds of bridges that um, this really cool place on earth has. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up on the right hand side of this building almost halfway. So if this is about my halfway mark of this building, I'd come down just a little bit and make, make yourself a little bit of kind of a diagonal type mark. And then on the left hand side, I'm gonna come up maybe a little bit higher than this one. So if you just travel over, da, 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 travel over and come up just a little bit, that'll put you in the vicinity that I'm gonna be in. And then when I go to um, meet these, I'm gonna arc it, but I'm not gonna arc it a, a lot. I'm just gonna kind of give it a gentle kind of arc. So I'm just using black paint and I'm gonna go something like this. And if you're going through wet paint as I am, awesome, just, just roll with it. And you can see I'm just kind of doing like a little sketchy line. I am gonna come into my building maybe about an inch and a half to two inches um, on both sides. So just have fun with that. Just bring that line in about as far as you want. I'm gonna put a little bit more black paint on my um, tool so I can make sure that this is nice and dark enough for me. And then once I have that one, and of course, don't worry if you've got broken lines, that's, that's the beauty of this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the bottom of this building. That's gonna be um, my next marker. And then I'm gonna come over to the other building, the left-hand building at about the same height. And that's where um, I'm gonna put this marker here. So what we're gonna do here is we're making another arc. This is gonna be the real bottom, bottom part of the, um, of the bridge. And we want it to come about halfway between here and our water. So you could almost just make yourself a little bit of a mark if you needed that visual to stop you. And as you're doing this, just make sure that you have it in an arc. It's gonna be a more severe arc than this one because we've got those points closer and it'll make sense in a minute. So as I'm doing this, I'm gonna kind of start in through here. I'm keeping my eye on the prize, which is the other mark. And I'm just gonna kind of give myself this nice, almost like a sketchy kind of line to create this bottom edge of my of my bridge and I'm gonna do the same thing over on this side, keeping my eye on my prize, which is the other mark. And again, if yours doesn't come out perfect, don't worry, just kind of fluff with it until you get it to be um, the way that you want it to be. And now I'm gonna do another um, arc. It's gonna be from here and it's gonna come over onto the left side and over onto the right side. So what this in essence is gonna be is the um, place where they're gonna, where the person's gonna walk. So it's gonna have a, the same kind of arc as this. So really what I can do is I can just kind of start at this center point and watch the arc of this and then watch the arc of this and just extend my, my line over to my building. So I'm reloading my, my painting tool and I'm gonna start in this vicinity and I'm just watching that upper arc and I'm just gonna do one that's similar. Um, and again, you might you know, play with your, your tool to get it the way, whatever way works easiest for you, but whatever broken lines happen, that just work, just roll with it. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing over here, watching this top arcing line and just kind of creating one that looks pretty similar. And then between this row and this row, I'm just gonna make a whole bunch more of these arcing 
lines just to kind of fill in this space. We'll call this like the support underneath the bridge. And again, I'm just using black paint, kind of just making these really loose um, support lines to make sure our bridge doesn't fall down. And then we'll do some um, little railings in between. So again, I'm just still using black paint and you can have this as sturdy and as thick as you want, or you can have thin little delicate lines, whatever is visually working for you, just roll with it. Um, and again, if you make it too light or too dark or too you know, wide or too thin, just keep adjusting it until you've got it um, the way that you want. We're gonna be putting a highlight on it later too. So if it's not quite what you had envisioned it to be, don't worry, we, we got another step later that'll help to, um, to modify it if you want. So I'm gonna do my um, ra the posts underneath my railing, the ones that are gonna go in a vertical direction. I just wanna caution you as you're doing these, our brain tells us um, because we're working on a, a, a arcing line that we're gonna want to make these arc themselves, I recommend that you keep them vertical so that way um, it looks more representational of an actual bridge um, unless you want to make it all decorative and stuff, but I'm going to just kind of start and I'm just going to make myself a whole bunch of vertical lines. And they don't have to be perfectly spaced. They don't have to have the same width to them. You just make them however you want. You can have some in between others. You could put X's if you wanted to, to give some kind of, you know, maybe a decorative element to it. I'm just going for a nice simple look here. Um, so I'm just making mine a vertical. And then we are going to be using the same tool for the next step. So once you've got all of your, your um, um, railings and posts, <laughs> That was a tough one. I almost couldn't think of the word there. Um, you can wash this tool and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer of our gondola. I'm gonna be using my palette knife and I'm gonna be using black paint. And what I do recommend that you do is that you dry your water area. It doesn't have to be 100% dry. Um, but it definitely will help you keep the um, the black paint as being black for this for the first layer. Um, so you can either you know take an extra long break, or you can blow on it, but that might take you all day. Or you can just dry it with a blow dryer. So whatever works for you to get it as dry as you need to. And you'll probably see mine. I'm sure I have some wet you know thicker spots, which is totally fine, but the majority of it's kind of dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a couple of little markers um, and just so you have a visual in your head. These gondola boats can come in many different lengths and widths and colors and all kinds of stuff. So uh, it's one of those things, again, if yours doesn't come out exactly like mine, don't worry about it. We're gonna have it kind of angled as if he's getting ready to go under the bridge a little bit. Um, so we're just gonna we're just gonna have some fun here. I'm gonna I've got black paint on my painting tool. I'm gonna do one of the corners of the boat is gonna be in this vicinity here. So I'm gonna go a little bit below my bridge, a little bit to the left of my building, and a little bit above my water. Make myself a little dot. That's where the tip is gonna be. And then on the left hand side, I'm gonna have the other end of the the boat, the other tip is gonna be a little bit to the right of this building. And I would say, you know, somewhere between the bridge and the bottom of the building, you know, somewhere around there, but, or just a little bit below the bridge, whatever, somewhere, somewhere in this vicinity, <laughs> trying to give you the perfect marker, but your painting might be a little bit different than mine. So that's gonna be the other tip. So we've got two tips in through there. 
And then I want the bottom of the boat to be maybe about two inches up from the bottom of my canvas and maybe a little bit lower than this corner here. So you could actually just go a little bit lower from this corner and just come about into the center of your bridge and give yourself a little bit of a marker. So somewhere somewhere in this vicinity. And now we're gonna connect these three dots with a big old scooping like U type shape. Um, and if you can, when you're at the bottom of the boat, if you can almost level it off a little bit and make that part a little bit flatter, um, that would help it look like the boat is in the water a little bit. But if you don't get that yet, don't worry about it because when we add the little reflection and stuff, you'll be able to flatten out the bottom of the boat. So here we go. I'm gonna start here. I've got my eye on the prize, which is right in um, that bottom area. So I'm gonna start like this, keeping my eye on the prize, which is right about here. I'm gonna flatten it out just a little bit. It doesn't have to be much of a, of a flat spot. And then I'm gonna scoop it up into where I meet that one up and through there. I'll put a little bit more paint on my utensil here. So something like this. And then once you've got it on there, and again, if it's not, you know, as flat as you want it at the bottom, don't worry about it. We can totally wiggle in some, some strategically placed uh, ripples in our water and get it to work out. So top, or back corner, front corner. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make another semi like arcing line. I want it to come maybe about an inch and a half to two inches down um, this side. So I'm gonna start maybe somewhere around here and it's gonna kind of dip down a little bit and I want it to go up and meet that top right hand corner. So we can, you know, whatever way is easiest for you to get this line on here. And again, it can be kind of a thicker line um, because we're gonna be painting inside that center of the boat anyway. So whatever is easiest for you to get this line on here, you just work that tool whatever way you need to. And then once you've got this on here, you're just gonna really color it in. So we're gonna color this in black and you do want this to kind of gradually come down. So if you've got a, I gotta work on my little corner here a little bit, just adjusting, adjust as you go. Um, and then I'm gonna make sure that I've got all of this in here and black. And this is the first layer of the, of the boat. So it might look a little funky right now because we don't have any, any identifying definition on it. But before we go away, we are gonna put, start the reflection of it in the water with this black paint. So now that I've got my shape, while I have the um, black paint on, I think I'm gonna widen this just a little bit, um, on my utensil, I'm gonna just take it into the water just a little bit and add a couple of little, little black streaks into that water. So this tells you that the, that the end is up out of the water. And this is where you could certainly um, flatten the bottom of the boat if you need to. And then once we've got this done, we are gonna use the same tool for the next step so you can wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are making painting the first layer of our gondola, gondolier, our person who's driving our boat. So I'm gonna use my palette knife and I'm using black paint. And I want you to remember this is an abstract painting. So we're not going for photorealism here, but hopefully we can get it so it's kind of in good proportion so he doesn't look like he's gonna fall over or anything. So I'm gonna have um, the top of his head is gonna be somewhere near where it hits the wall. The, the wall. Um, and I'm gonna have him a little bit to the left of the center of my boat, so or the center of my canvas or whatever the center is. So if this is the center, I'm gonna go a little bit to the left. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a vertical line that's gonna just kind of hit the, um, somewhere in that vicinity. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make myself a couple of um, shapes. <laughs> so he, I, I want his body to um, 
not be overly wide. Um, so I'm really gonna just come down from um, here a little bit and I'm gonna make myself kind of a long rectangle. So uh, I'm gonna start uh, maybe about a half of an inch to an inch away from the top of my um, vertical line that I just did. And then I'm gonna make myself, I'm just pulling the paint out to the left and I'm gonna go maybe about a quarter of an inch to a half of an inch wide. And I'm just gonna come all the way down to the bottom of the boat. So that's gonna kind of start where I'm going. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a shirt. <laughs> so I'm gonna be using the, um, the smaller side of my, of my tool. And what I'm gonna do is about halfway up between here and where the boat is, I'm gonna make myself a little kind of vertical line that sticks out a little bit, maybe a little bit more on one side than the other. Um, I'm also gonna make myself a little bit of some shoulders. So those are gonna be a little bit wider than that um, original rectangle that we just made. And now I'm gonna connect these two edges. So the top or the bottom, they could be wider or skinnier than the other. It's, you know, they're, ev everybody comes in different shapes. So if your yours is a little bit different shape than mine, that's totally fine. Um, I'm just kind of making mine a little bit like maybe his shirt pu puffs out a little bit at the bottom. Um, and he doesn't have super wide shoulders, but you certainly could make yours as, you know, as round or as skinny as you want. Now I'm gonna put two arms or the impression of two arms. Um, so what I'm gonna do is about maybe a third of the way up this shirt on the right hand side, I'm gonna put a little bit of a diagonal mark. So something like that. Yeah, it's a little bit too aggressive. And then I'm gonna just connect that to the shoulder. So something like that. And again, you know, using these fun tools, they have a mind of their own. So that's that's the beauty of it. You know, it, it whatever happens, happens. So if your shirt or jacket looks puffier than mine, then maybe, you know, it's more of a winter coat that he's wearing. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another arm on this side. I'm going to put the elbow maybe a little bit higher. So I'm going to, you know, come over to the left. Maybe this one sticks out a little bit less or a little bit more, whatever, whatever works. So something like that. And maybe this is the arm that is steering the pole. So maybe I've got it something like that and I'll just thicken it up. Maybe you can even have a little um, peekaboo spot in between. So maybe you can see a little bit of the water on the other side. Don't know if I can get that to do that, but I'm, I'm trying. Sometimes these, you know, these little tools are super fun. Oh, there we go. So I got a little, little spot that you can see through it. Um, and then I need a head on my body. So what I'm gonna do for my head is, he's gonna be wearing a hat, <laughs> but I wanna put a little bit of a neck on him first. So I'm just gonna widen a little bit of an area in through there. So there's his neck. I'm gonna put kind of a horizontal line. It can be tipped in any way you want it to be. It can be wider than his shoulders. It could be more narrow than his shoulders. Whatever is visually appealing to you. And then I'm gonna put a top to my hat. And if you find that you've made your your head too tall or too small or whatever, you just, you know, keep adjusting it until it looks kind of proportionate to the body that you put on there. Um, that's kind of fun. And I think I want my shoulders to be maybe a little wider. Um, and again, you just kind of keep keep adjusting it until it looks good to you. And then we are gonna use the same brush for, or same tool for the next step. So once you've got your gondolier all nice and, and dressed, you can, oh, I guess, you know what? He probably needs the pole, huh? Cause he's gonna have to have something to steer the boat, right? So what I get to do while we've got the black on the brush, let's just give it, give it a pull. So somewhere from his hand into the water, you're just gonna make yourself a diagonal kind of line. You can go in front of the boat or because we're gonna be adding um, a highlight onto it later, but that, that 
pole definitely has to hit the water somewhere. There we go. Now we're ready for the next step. So you can wash and dry your palette knife and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the highlight on the bridge. So I'm gonna be using my palette knife and I'm gonna be using white paint. And really all I'm gonna be doing is doing some white lines on the top. So I'm gonna do it on the top and then I'm gonna be doing it, I'm doing it on the top of the railing and then I'll be doing it in between the posts and if you want, you can also do it down on this base area. So really wherever you're feeling like you wanna add a little bit more dimension or information, like I think this is cool doing it in through here, um, you can certainly do that. And again, I just gotta you know keep reminding myself and you that this is an abstract painting. So <laughs> we get to just experiment and explore and enjoy this fun process of creating something that is visually hopefully appealing to you. Um, and now that I've got that done, I'm gonna add the little bit of uh, highlights in through this area and you can go fast, you can go slow, you can, you know, I suppose you could even add other colors too. I'm just gonna be adding the white, but you could certainly incorporate any of your other colors into here. Just, you know, the freedom of painting abstract is that it doesn't have to be, look exactly like anything. It can re represent whatever you want or it can represent nothing. <laughs> and then we're gonna use this same painting tool for the next step. So once you've got this all nice and done, you can wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the highlight on the boat. I'm gonna be using my palette knife and I'm gonna be using white and yellow. Um, you could certainly use more black or more green if you wanted to. Um, but how I'm gonna do this is I'm putting, I'm gonna start with just white and I'm using my um, palette knife to do so. I want an edge of the boat on our side so that's where the, the most dominant highlight is gonna go. And then I'm gonna have a little bit of a highlight on the other side of the boat as well. So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect to this corner, to this corner, and this is gonna represent our side of the boat. And it's gonna be, I'm gonna have it come about halfway between the bottom of my boat and the top of my boat in through there. So if you need to, you can certainly kind of make yourself a marker in through here so you don't go too high or too low and it gives it um, some good dimension. So I've got my white paint on my brush. And again, if you go through wet black paint, don't worry about it, just work, work it into your, your design. And I'm just kind of coming down this edge. I am going a little bit slow so I can kind of control it a little bit. Not that we need to control it 100%, but so I do want to have that the correct movement and kind of shape onto it. So I'm going a little bit slower right now. I'm gonna get it nice and heavy in this area in through here. And you know, maybe you find yourself just kind of dabbing it as you go. Whatever is working for you is totally fine by me. I wanna make sure I've got a nice bright tip on it. And then I want some on that, um, that far side of the boat. So I am gonna use a little bit in through here. I'm gonna be cautious to, to not put any on my gondolier's legs because we're gonna give him a highlight in a minute. I think I need to move to the small side of my tool. So I just put some on the small side so I can have a little bit more control in through here. And I haven't decided yet what side my, um, my pole is gonna be on, my steering pole, so... Um, I think it's, I don't know. I think it might need to be on the front side of the boat. So I'm gonna leave it on the front side of the boat. Now I'm gonna add a touch of yellow and white onto my tool to add a little bit of yellow into here just to make a nice sunshine effect. And then if you feel you need to at this point while you're doing this um, highlight on the boat, if you feel like you need more in your water, you can certainly 
you know, more black or more white or anything around that reflection area, feel free to do it at this point. This is going to be kind of the last time we, we touch this area. So if you want to do any little modifications around there, feel free to do so. And then we're going to use this same tool for the next step. So once you've got your highlight on your boat and your reflection finished, you can wash and dry that tool and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing our gondola guy, our gondolier, <laughs> gondola guy, gondola guy, gondola guy. <laughs> you try it three times fast. I did it for a shot. All right, so um, the colors I'm gonna be using are orange, yellow, and white. And if I feel like I need to add back some black, I certainly will. Um, I'm probably mostly gonna be using my um, short side of my palette knife. And really all I'm looking to do is just add some color to this. So I'm going to start with some orange on my fancy painting tool. I'm gonna to give them a little bit of orange in the hat, something like that. I'm gonna put some orange in his clothing. And if your um, black is still wet, Yippee, <laughs> I want mine to be, because I, I want it to just blend in and make it look, you know, pretty darn natural and really um, have some cool blending type effects. I'm gonna wipe my tool on my paper towel. I'm picking up a touch of white um, so I can give his pants a little bit of highlight and not make them look exactly the same color as his shirt. And I'm bringing his legs or the highlight down into the boat so that way it extends the length of his legs and gives you the impression that he's inside the boat. And this is one of those steps that if you go too bright with your highlight, just pick up a touch of black and just work it back in. Because all you need is just a real subtle kind of um, highlight there just to give the information. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of white on my tool and give a little highlight on the top of his hat, maybe on the brim of his hat, maybe on the little shoulder, because we know that he's going into the sunlight over there, maybe a little bit on, on his arm, but I don't want to lose the, the edge of of this with you know so you don't need to do it too too much but you know just something that that works for you visually and I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight on my pole um, so I'm just gonna put a touch of the white on my brush as my brush my painting tool as well and I'm just gonna kind of tap this down my pole and I'm having my pole on the far side of my um, boat so I I skipped it and if you go too much look I'll just did at the end and just pick up a little bit of black and we'll just make that part of the pole in the water <laughs> um, and then hmm he looks great so we just have one little step left to go so once you've got your gondola guy all nice and decorated you can we're actually going to use our brush for the next step so you can get ready all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the final step, which is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. You could sign yours wherever you want. I'm using my, my small brush and I'm gonna use black paint. Um, I think I'm gonna sign this one in this bottom left-hand corner. I think I'm gonna sign it right in my building. Oh, maybe I'll use I'm gonna, I'm switching colors. I'm gonna use orange, orange and black on my brush. I'm gonna do my initials. You could certainly sign yours with whatever you want, a symbol, your first name, anything that you want is however you wanna identify your paintings. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you had fun with your palette knife and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.